In the last video, I talked about what any given function of x would look like. And it looked like a bunch of powers of x uh, decreasing by 1, each power, and some constant in front of it. And then I said, okay, well, what is a function of x plus h? You replace all your x's with x plus h, and that's what you get. You get the same kind of idea where all those x plus h's have a power of n, and they decrease by what? whatever you want. So it doesn't matter what the n is. You can start at 58, you can start at 3. Mostly in algebra, you go up to like 2. Um, so then we're trying to define, we're trying to figure out, well, what's a function of that x plus h minus f of x? We're trying to figure that out because that's important in our formula here. When we want to find the limit, we find the change in y. And y is the function of x. And then we're going to divide that by the change in x. And, then, and we're going to see what happens. Well, when I subtract them, I basically get the a con the c1 times x plus h to the n minus c2 x to the n. Well, that's the same thing as c1 taken out front, uh, factored out, and it becomes x plus h to the n minus x to the n. And if I do that with every single term, I get you know the constant out front, and then I get the the x plus h to that that power minus the x to that power. And it keeps going on and on and on and on. And check down here at the end where I have basically this constant term minus this constant term. Well, that of course is going to go to zero. So that's not even going to be part of our equation. And then look at this guy. It gets x plus h minus x. Well, x minus x is just left with h. So that's just going to be cn times h, right? Okay, great. And if we want to make this look a little bit, whoops, a little bit more like our equation we have up there, we're going to divide everything by h. So all of this, all of this stuff, all of that gets divided by h. Okay? That's all good, but what is this term right here? Let's just look at that. x plus h to the n. Now, if you recall, if you can remember this from our binomial expansion video, right? x plus h let's say to the second was had something to do with Pascal's triangle it was 1 2 1 with an x squared um, an xh and an h squared right and an h squared at the end if you don't know that you should try to review which is the same thing as look at this notice this power of 2 is 2 choose 0 x squared plus 2 choose 1, which is just 2, xh, plus 2 choose 2 of h squared, okay? Uh, this is the binomial expansion, and it uses the combination idea. Okay, so now, what is x plus h to the n? Well, it's basically just n choose 0, right, of x to the n, well, that should be an n. x to the n. I'll try to do these in different colors. It's going to get kind of funky. h to the 0. Remember these powers have to add up to n. Then it's going to be, we're going to add that to n choose 1 of x to the n minus 1 times h to the 1. And we're going to add that to n choose 2 x to the n minus 2 h to the 2. Now recall this 2 plus n minus 2 is still going to equal n. The exponents are always going to equal each other. Okay, and then we're going to keep going and going and going and going till we get down, all the way down till we get almost to the end, which is n choose n minus 1 of just x, right? x is made up of this, this top number minus this bottom number here. So n minus n minus 1 is just x to the first. And then we have what will what plus that one will equal uh, n, and it's x to h to the n minus one. And then we finally have the last term of just adding h to the n. Okay. Now try to try to wrap your head around how this compares to that binomial expansion we had up here. Okay. And I'll just stop there, and I'll continue on in the next video.